joined by Joanne Stewart, a partner at Learners LLP in Toronto. She is a family lawyer, and Joanne, uh, Sharon and I were just talking about how complicated the holidays are anyway. Now this is just for, pe not even for people going through a divorce or a separation, but just as your children get older, even oh, yeah. if everybody's still together, there is a boyfriend or a girlfriend or they get married, and then it's, you know, one or they're year away. it's your, or they're away, or just trying to get people together sometimes it's in a family is, is horrible. And I have a son, for example, who is in L.A. We're going to see him mm -hmm. in February for an induction into a Hall of Fame thing. So, and we've had three family weddings where he's, we've spent a week each time together. So he said, I'm not coming up from L.A. for dinner. <laughs> So, you know, and I take it personally, even though it's not it's not meant that way. So it's hard, right? Very it, sensitive time of year. It is really hard, actually. They're all with 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 intact families too. It's very very difficult, and the. Um, as we all age, too, it seems every decade or every two decades, whether the family is together or apart, the socially acceptable norms change, too. So what used to be even sleeping in the same bed, I mean, what do you do about that? When you have a young couple, they're in their 20s, and they go to their yeah. parents' home. But what do we do about that? Not in my house. Some I, of them do, and you know. And, and Well, some of them do, and other yeah. people say no. So what they say the, the, the boyfriend may say in his home, my parents allow it. The girlfriend's parents may say, we don't allow it. Then they may see a grandparent who allows it or doesn't allow it. Yep. There's all of, even all of that that goes on. It gets really uh, difficult. Difficult. So <laughs> when people draft agreements, what is considered a holiday? When they, when they draft separation and divorce agreements and, and when they're going to see their children. Because let, let's talk about younger children who yeah. are who are mandated by an agreement yes. about where they go yes. when it's uh, it's actually it sounds really silly and I'm going to sound like Christmas Scrooge but holidays are difficult because they're personal to the families and what's important to one family is not important to another family and what's important socially changes over time too and Halloween is one of the things to go especially for little kids it used to be 30 years ago nobody really cared about Halloween but now Halloween has become a huge event People decorate their houses. They spend a fortune. Mm -hmm. They have those blow-up things. They spend a fortune on costumes. <laughs> I love that, those <laughs> blow-up things. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Those big, those big massive pumpkins. And the it cat used to, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. Used, used to be Santa Claus, but now we have a whole front yard full of blow-up things. Oh, we know, because it starts in July. <laughs> it does, they do, for sure. Yeah. It all, it's, it, and, and, so, and so they want to fight about who's going to peel the child off the ceiling after they've oh, had three tons of sugar? They fight about who picks the costume. Okay. What will be the costume? What time does a child go out? What treats is a child allowed to keep? It, does a child collect for, it used to be the UNICEF boxes, so oh, is there yeah. money for the child? Does a child, who walks the child? Who might stay at home with the child? So, does a grandparent get to see the child? And what about the school, mm. the school thing, the mm -hmm. school Halloween party? So this it's must keep, endless. this must be just crazy because in most endless. cases, this is people, only Halloween. No, but in most cases, <laughs> in most cases, people have joint custody. Mm -hmm. I mean, in most cases, it didn't used to be that way. It was the mother had custody, custody usually, right. and father mm -hmm. had visitation. But now, more and more, it's joint. Yes. So then, they have to both decide every every issue yeah. together. So this is something where do they actually call you then to mediate? In in the ideal world. Parents can sort these things out mm -hmm. in an ordinary way, just as if they were still together. <laughs> in a less ideal world, they see they do a parenting plan with the help of a parenting coordinator who tends to be a social worker or psychologist, <gasps> not somebody like us. They, right. The parenting coordinators are invaluable. Very few people will do it because it's a really difficult, thankless job in the oh. sense that well, that's not true. It's a very, you know, sometimes the parenting coordinators, coordinators well thanked because he or she will assist with making the plan, and then if he or she is given the authority by the parents, will decide about these things. So well, there's, I, there's sentiment with every single one, whether it's Thanksgiving and Christmas and yes. Easter, and there's sentiment, and everyone's important. I'm yes. still stuck with yes. parent coordinator. I didn't even yes. know there was such a thing. That's that's how things have changed. Yeah, and it's it's come up out of, out of the necessity over time, because lawyers used to do these things, but it used to be things were more simple. Now, 
everything has become more complex in the sense that we deal with all of the detail and there's all this electronic back and forthing because it used to be you couldn't text somebody and say oh I want to pick them up at 515 you had to make the call send a letter That's in true. the mail <laughs> it took a week or two so now everything is so quick it allows for all kinds of organization that nobody wants to pay a lawyer for and frankly we're not good at we don't we're well not all some of us are lovely at it <laughs> others of us are not I don't want to speak ill of people but the really the parenting coordinator social workers they know what to look for they know how to speak about it they know what the social things are appropriately at this time in people's lives. So when you draft an agreement, then, yes. Um, yes. do you deal with a parenting coordinator who has already dealt with the parents when you're going to the section on holidays? It's, it depends on the parents. If the parents are somewhat getting along, I can lay it all out because after all these years I have a host of parenting plans that other people have done who are better mm -hmm. trained than I to do it. If the parents, so I borrow from those, rightly or wrongly. Mm -hmm. If the parents cannot get along, we do try to send them to somebody, and then there's a separate parenting plan done that we attach to the agreement with a staple. <gasps> Mm -hmm. There you go. Done. It's perfect. <laughs> and that and one, well that, done. And that one covers holidays, That's obviously. correct. That's correct. Do, yes. do these situations ever end up in court, or is this generally sorted out in the office? These situations up, end up in court a really? lot. Yeah, they do. That's I was sad. Really, I told Gary. I'm gonna, Gary Durenfeld is a, a social worker in Hamilton. He's about my age. Mm -hmm. he had, when I sent in my, my thing for this, my little what, what we're mm -hmm. going to talk about, he s sends an electronic newsletter around, and he's a social worker. Mm -hmm. So he was inviting people to remember that holidays are about the kids, and it's supposed to be relaxed. And when we're running around, having kids run around, even in intact families, separated, intact, the child's yanked out of bed at 6 in the morning to open presents for Santa Claus and then yanked somebody else's place at 7 for breakfast, then 9 o'clock somewhere else, mm -hmm. and the poor little kid... And that's the memory is, this child takes through their life. That's the memory the child takes. Yeah. So Gary, dealing with adults, I don't think I answered your question, but... <laughs> He says, you know, we all take to Christmas in these holidays what we experience. So a lot of adults or young adults are so stressed out by the thought of the holiday, they don't even want to have the holiday. So then to go to what you said in intact relationships, if you have a 20-year-old who has run around the whole time mm -hmm. and then say the girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever it is had a lovely experience, one is saying, let's have this warm, lovely experience. The other one says, oh, my God, I don't want to have an experience at all. And so a person like Gary deals with not only separated people but together people or young people trying to reconcile how they feel about what's supposed to be a fun holiday. See, it never occurred good. to me. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it didn't occur to me. I mean, now you've got divorced grandparents, divorced parents, yeah. and these children really yes. are stretched to the limit. So they, they, they've just got off school, right? and they're supposed to be off for a couple of weeks relaxing before yeah. they go back to school, mm -hmm. and meanwhile they're being pulled in every direction. They are. And it goes on, it really, you said, oh, do you go to court? Yeah. We used to go to court. I used to go to court on this all the time when I was wow. younger. And it, that the, rightly or wrongly, the trickle down tends to be to younger lawyers because really people don't want to pay for this when they reflect on it by the middle of January. They get a bill for five or $10,000 to talk about Christmas access. And they yeah. say, really, why did you let me do that? So the younger lawyers do it, but we try to stay away from it because it's like, you know, as we all mature, you yeah. can see what's coming. Yeah. Even we were having the discussion today when you talked about intact families, what mm -hmm. do we do? You see it coming and you try to ward it off. So people that I'm working with, by the middle of October, end of October, I start talking about it. Because who wants to run around and go to court about things like that? It's horrible. It's really terrible. Well, absolutely. Now, what about grandparents? Do you ever have grandparents that come in and yes. say, do I have any rights? Because I'm, I'm, I don't get to see my grandkids. It's Frequently, actually. It goes on a lot all the time because the, the grandparents flow usually with the child or their own child so if it's the father's parents and the mother has the children the father and the mother are separated the mother says the kids are not going to see the paternal grandparents that paternal grandparents don't usually like that so it becomes a thing that again we try to work out or send them to a parenting coordinator or social work to try to talk it out and come up with something failing that they end up fighting in a court or before an arbitrator do do grandparents actually have any legal rights not so many not too many. <laughs> okay. The, the trickle down, it, it depends on what they've done. If, the, if they've been really helpful and raised a child, more so than the parents, because that happens too. It, it, it's, like, it's been going on forever, I guess. But if young people have a child who, and they can't raise a child, the default position is the grandparent does it. So if that 
parent, like the bio parent, as we call them, the biological parent, then grows older, ends up in another relationship, wants to take the kid away from the grandparents. The grandparents may say, we're the influence here. Can we at least continue, not necessarily to keep the child day to day forever, but have an influence? For general holiday things, if parents split up and for whatever reason the grandparents have been sticking their noses in or fighting or argumentative or whatever, they may be blocked from having uh, any kind of influence at all. Oh, mm. boy. And yeah. is this something that's on the increase, fighting over access on holidays, whatever they may be? From my, I, I have to say no, but I think it's a function of my age, not the, the fighting. I think mm -hmm. just, again, because no, I'm 58, people aren't going to pay me to fight about Christmas, and I try to sort it out by saying to somebody I work with or a parenting coordinator, those, that family's going to end up in a mess. We need to deal with this now. Yeah. But from what I understand, just uh, chatting with people, mm -hmm. the fights continue. Really, they continue. And, and again, with the diversity and the spread of people in a city like Toronto, even the working hours, because the city works 24 hours a day. Yeah. Unlike a country setting where people work 8 to 4, 9 to 5, whatever it is, even the time becomes an issue for people in a city like this because if somebody works nights from 3 to 11 or whatever, that affects what goes on. It's really interesting because there are all of, the, uh, all of the things in play and the various cultures and the various expectations. Well, that would be the Quite same thing in, in you know, cities like Vancouver. And, Absolutely. And, I mean, really Any, across this country. I yes. mean, there are, there are different... Uh, holidays yeah. and different issues, right. but we socially have changed the the, dyna the dynamics yes. have changed. So obviously, I guess the issues have changed. That's right. In the urban centers, it's it becomes more uh, interesting, complicated. Wow. You have to feel for the little kids, though, regardless of what the 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 values are, the expectations are. These little kids are all in a big I situation think, about these things. I think the kids should be approached, and they should draft the holiday decision document. Where yeah. do you want to go? You know the problem is with that. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of, that's, that's in kind a of, perfect world, though. <laughs> well, you know yeah. the, the poor little kids too. A lot of parents do that, and then mm -hmm. the, so they have a kid who's eight or nine yeah. making decisions for the parents. And the problem is, the, the poor little kid says something, and the parent who feels he yeah. or she lost is then mad at the child. And that yeah, it becomes the emotions are too high. You know what yeah. most little kids would do? Mm -hmm. They would probably say, "Forget it, yeah. just forget it." And that's just sad. Yeah. Really I had one family. The daughter who was bright went to boarding school to avoid her parents. Oh my goodness. Should solve their problem. Should stop fighting. Mm -hmm. I'll go to boarding school. <laughs>Hi there, I'm Christine Bentley in a studio with Sharon Caddy and with Joanne Stewart. And we're talking about uh, holidays and children and uh, split up families and the whole dynamics of that. One question is that I have is older kids. Now, once they hit about 16, 17, they want to be with their friends. Mm -hmm. And they kind of sit, they, I mean, they barely want to spend time <laughs> with, with their, their parents, even when they are together. They, they'd like to go to their buddy's house or That's their true. friend's house. Or they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Are they then bound by this, uh, you know, parenting no. agreement? No, not really. I mean, they, the words may be there, um, but you can't make a 16-year-old do anything or a 17-year-old. I was going to say, is there it's, an age cutoff that is generally accepted? It's, hmm. it's really problematic, actually. Yeah. It depends on the child. I would say 13, 14, mm -hmm. because really what happens is kids won't say, get out of bed, and what do you do? If you say to the child, you are going here now, and he or she says no, then I, don't, I have no solution to this, because yeah. people experience this too. The kid will say, won't get out of the car. You want me to go see her? No. So then parents call the police. That's really helpful. Really? Do they? <laughs> sure. And then, but the police aren't going to lift a 14-year-old out of the car and say, you need to go there. They won't mm -hmm. do it. So it becomes just not helpful. I mean, no. The answer is no. <laughs> so do you get, but do you get dragged into it? Sure. And but we does can't, the, we does can't the coordinator do get dragged well, into it? You can't it. win yes. that. I know yes. you, you can't win that. Well, you know what'll happen though again in the real world if people have the money to spend and really the interest in going on about it, they will take the child to the coordinator. And the coordinator will talk to the child and try to not necessarily convince him or her to go, but fi try to figure out what's going on. And many times the child becomes the adult. So the child will say, "All right, you know what? I'll just go do that and get out of the way for an hour. I can go see him, I can go see her. I'll just do it. It'll be done." And so the kids will take that, what should be an adult stance, to assist in the whole situation.
Now, what about traveling mm. over the holidays? That's I know that's a biggie where people mm -hmm. say they want to maybe Boxing Day or they want to go away. They just want to get away from winter or whatever. It's their time, the only vacation they have. They're off work and, and yes. they want to take the child away. And meanwhile, they need a bunch of signatures on the yeah. other end. They do. Yeah. Now, I've, I've been down this road um, and I know I sort of researched and drafted my own document and made sure it was all signed. Is there, is there a standard document that should be used though? There kind of is. If you go on the um, the Canadian government website, mm -hmm. there is a travel consent that we use most of the time. And um, what we do, depending on where you're traveling, you need to put in more or less detail. If you're going to Disney World in Florida, that's one thing. Yeah. If you announce today that you're going to take your child to Afghanistan, maybe something else. Yeah. So it, it depends on the, the, the choice and the, the, with the uh, degree of difficulty. And parents fight about these things as well. I mean, for example, I mean, I can imagine, I'm, I'm giving you just a, a, a scenario out of my head, but let's say somebody says, well, I don't think Mexico's safe. Yes. Uh, I, I, you're not taking my child to Mexico. I mean, not even Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that's, even, not even yes, something which is... That's which more is, draconian. Yes. yes. But, but no, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not confident about that. Which I've heard people say, yeah, for not sure. about their children, but just about, oh, I don't think I'll go there because something happened there a year ago or right. whatever. Right. And, and then they end up in court over that? They might, yes. Yeah. They might. And what happens in the end? Does, does if, they, if they have joint custody, does somebody get to absolutely veto? It, it, the, yes. In the sense, joint custody means equal decision making. So yes. there, there is a veto power there. And if a ch person wanted to go to Mexico, depending on where in Mexico and what the resort was and all of those things, unless the child had some allergy, there was some terrible potential thing to happen, the, ch the, the person would be allowed to go, typically. Unless, by way of example, say the bio parent who wants to go to Mexico is Mexican, and over the last five years, he or she has actually wanted to go back to Mexico and never returned to Canada. So that's... A, 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 that may be a more problematic trip because once the person's there, he or may she she may disappear. If it's you're from Toronto and your family's in Toronto and everybody's in Toronto, then you're likely going on a holiday, which is a very different thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Because I know that there's certain countries that have agreements yeah. where a child, a parent, cannot abduct a child if, right. if that's the danger. Yes. Uh, I mean, where they, they will return the child. Yes. Governments that will and other governments that won't. So, that's correct. So. But we should yeah. mention that um, we are we are hyper aware if you're in a separation or divorce yeah. situation. But um, even if, if you're not, if you have a child, I know when my children got to be about 11, 12, 13, they got invited by other families to go on trips to Disney or to here to yes. one went to San Francisco, um, and that child does need to carry documentation that they're allowed to travel with that other family. They do. They yeah, do. and that's something that if you're not in this already, uh, you know, hyper. That's right. Legal system because you're in a separation or divorce, you might not even think about that, and that could be a whole host of problems. Huge, it, it is, yeah. because the parents who take the children, uh, the, the friends, mm -hmm. they're they're responsible for them, so it becomes a whole thing. Yeah. The other thing that falls into that is uh, out of province medical insurance, which a lot of people don't think about. So if your child is traveling to wherever it is, somebody mm -hmm. has to make that sure there's insurance in place because if there's an issue in a hospital and there's no coverage, then you have two things going on. One, the parents of the friends need to make the decision, and somebody has to pay. Yeah. So oh. that's just a little practical detail. Yeah, it, it was something that, uh, and I remember one, one of the, the girls when she was traveling with another family, and I brought it up. I said, well, I'll have, I'm going to have these documents ready. I'll, they yeah. said, well, what documents would those be? And I said, well, it, it's not coming from me, me, but it's, it's you've got to have this. If my child's with you, because you don't know what you're going to deal with at a border or at, a, air, at the airport or anywhere. That's right. Yeah. We've actually, when, when we traveled with our kids when they were younger we were stopped at the airports because I have kept my own name so mm -hmm. to speak yeah so we're tra the kids have a certain name my husband has a name I yeah. have my name and they took separated the kids took them aside individually and that happened more than once and questioned them about what was going on and this is on family holidays one of which was next collection and it's yeah. interesting this is for like really interesting right up through age 16 where yes at, and that's where it gets tricky because they do get to travel a bit more and they get invited to go places or do things school trips even yeah. and uh as a parent, in a way, I know when my girls reach 16, they seem pretty mature, and you don't think of them as a child so much anymore. 
I do. I know. <laughs> I do, because I, I can see the 16-year-old, oh, yeah. rightly or wrongly, <laughs> sitting at the bar in Mexico at a resort oh, yeah. until 1 o'clock in the morning. That t the, so uh, the, ten, the the two-year-olds yeah. are easier, in a sense. You put them in their little crib and say, stay. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just don't think about the documentation as much. I no. did. Yeah. But, but in a way, it would be, you know, even my daughter goes, I don't want, I, you, know, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I kept that little thing on my desktop. For, for years. I bet. And yeah. For sure. I bet. And they just filled it in with different stuff. Well, it's good that you were experienced, too, in the sense that you knew what to look for. Because can mm -hmm. you imagine, if, uh, off everybody goes on this lovely holiday, and then suddenly your daughter can't get on the plane for whatever oh, yeah. reason? And she, then, then it would become your fault. Yeah, well, and mom, then, see, then mom, her, why didn't you think of that? Her holiday is my holiday because it's a break. So <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. That's so, right. you know, I count on that just as much. Yeah. So. Yes, no, for sure. You see a wave and... See you. Have fun. Have a nice week. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's right. It's so, Joanne, we've talked about uh, Christmas and Halloween. What about things like um, birthdays, like the parents' birthday? And I'm or sure the they fight birthday. over the child's yeah. birthday. What What are the other... You say Halloween is a biggie. Halloween's a big one. Birthdays, birthdays, birthdays Mother's are really Day, big. Father's, Mother's Day, Day, Father's Day. Right? Yeah. Yeah, they because they um, may have a stepfather who has raised them mm -hmm. for longer than the father. Yeah, yes. So do we get do we get a flurry of activity around that too? We the Father's Day and Mother's Day seem to be more loose and in, in, the ter in terms of what the adult expects, and what those of us in the field I'll call it including this and Gary, what we find really kind of weird is that really Mother's Day and Father's Day is about the little kids. And if when you think back when your kids were oh, little, yeah. they make those things in school, their mm -hmm. little projects. If they don't have a parent to show them to, mm -hmm. then they go back to school on, say, the Monday, and somebody says, oh, what did your mum or dad yeah. say about your thing? Oh, I didn't even see them. So if parents actually got through their heads, it was for, them, for these little kids to be able to give the gift instead of the parent having a right to see this poor little kid. I think there'd be actually more involvement for Mother's Day and Father's Day because a lot of people just kind of not blow it off. It's not the right word, but the parents don't get as excited. They tend to get excited about their birthdays. Yeah. You're listening to What so, She Said on Sirius XM 167, Candidate Talks, Sharon Caddy, Christine Bentley, and, of course, the one, the only, Joanne Stewart, joining us mm -hmm. in studio today. Now, once you have all the stuff drafted, everything's kind of down, you got your plan mm -hmm. on paper. Mm -hmm. Every year, though... It kind of renews itself in in the household, and the stress has come yes. up again. Yes. How should how should parents approach this? Because I mean, the holidays come up every year. It's no surprise they're on the calendar. What's the best advice to parents who are going to be dealing with this year after year? Ashley, I would start dealing with the whole year in advance, mid to late January, early February. I would lay out every holiday that needs to be discussed, every holiday I'm going to take from work, what I need to do, what the kid needs to do, what the other side needs to do, what everybody needs to do, if you have all the, the moving parts, and try to organize as much as possible. Set the dates in, as much as you can. So if somebody doesn't fall stress. in line, absolutely, yeah. and say, here it is. Here it is, everybody. Mm -hmm. Email it around. This is a schedule. And if you have to tinker, okay, but at least there's a fallback. I wouldn't do it event by event. No. Well, you've been practicing family law for a while. Uh, is it getting better? Are people getting, because it's the new norm. I mean, my children, I remember coming home from school and saying, what's a stepbrother? What's oh, yeah. a half-brother? I knew and one. A, because yes. I only whole, knew one divorced family when I was yeah. in elementary school. So it was a so whole yeah. different, <laughs> different terminology, a different reality. It is the new normal. So are, are parents getting better at it? They are, but there's more complexity. Because Why? there are more layers. There's more layers. There's bio mom, bio dad, and then the, the inter... Like some kids, say the parent gets married three times. Oh, maybe the oh children, well, okay. No, but no, maybe the, the parents... The child chooses parent number two. So it, it, the child may choose, uh, like, not bio dad, but dad number two, even over dad number one or dad number three. Mm. So that if... The, and even what's happening now, which I find kind of weird, is that parents... Adults in the mature relationship separate. They're in their 50s or 60s. So, and then the, the one who wanted to go, so to speak, mourns the loss of the family. And then he or she is saying, well, can I join you for Christmas Eve cocktails? I think, really? Mm -hmm. so, I, so I have to give my head a shake about that. But that's a new norm because that wouldn't have happened before. And that's a complex thing. What do you say yeah, to this yeah. person? When yeah. you have all your 20-year-old children, your whole family is there, and the other, this one comes in and weeps at the cocktail party. <laughs> See and my you, face? And, and See your my other face one, when you, I think about you it? You may be think, there with your new partner. Of course, yes. Partner and, yeah. Yes. Well, what is oh, that? Oh, this is a movie. It, it, is, it is a movie. It's so a what is movie. That? I don't even, what do you say about that? That's not a legal issue. I think, I don't, I have no, I don't know what to say. <laughs> 
Well, I, I should say yeah. I'm going up Christmas Eve to my ex's family's Christmas mm -hmm. Eve deal. Yes. Uh, because I'm on very good terms with them. Um, and I got permission for, from my ex yes. to make sure he was okay with it, it yeah. which he is. He's delighted. Yeah. Uh, because m my children's maternal grandmother, his mother, yes. is very old. And I don't know how much longer... Uh, she's going to be alive, so we're going to drive up and yep. see everybody there. It, that's a lovely thing, because everybody's getting along beautifully, and, and I, you know, There's in terms no issue. of the, the, the tapestry of life, yeah. that, that's a, because all weaving these things is fabulous. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if somebody, if you showed up there, I am say with an eighteen-year-old boyfriend and hung all over him, it would be a different thing. She's not bringing him. <laughs> <laughs> He's staying no, home. Right. A, they they invite me. They invite <laughs> me every year because I bring the kids, right? So for sure, I, they probably the kids, like you. No, they, we we get along yeah, great. There's sure. no issue. Yeah. So they they invite me, yeah. and I make yeah. sure that he knows so that mm -hmm. uh, you know. It's lovely. That's a lovely thing. And you leave eighteen year old Skippy at home. Yes, I do. <laughs> Rumors here. That's what you're doing. <laughs> it's not, none of it's true, and she She's said it. She's full <laughs> of trouble. It's complimentary. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Actually, I'm liking this. Oh, no. Oh, I'm a cradle. <laughs> no one accuses no. me of such things. Yeah, no. Darn. Would you uh, like us to? Sure. We can. Okay. <laughs> I, we'll make him 19. Skippy yes. and Biff. It's good. <laughs> I don't know where we're meeting these guys. Yeah, no, I don't know either. <laughs> I'm sure there's a place I could probably find it. I, could ask I bet you for could. You. Well, Joanne Stewart, always a pleasure to have you here, Thank and you. hope your holidays are go swimmingly you. and trouble-free and Thank happy. You. And Thank you, ladies. See you next year. I, I hope know. so. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Thank you. And you know, we next are going to tackle another another big holiday issue. Holiday hair. I mean, <laughs> what am I going to do with my hair? Uh, we have an expert coming in to talk about that. Jason Kearns has the answers. He'll be here when we come back. This is what she said on Sirius XM Canada Talks, Channel 167. Click the channel subscribe button for full-length interviews and more from what she said here on YouTube.